thanks for tuning in to another episode of Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh, the show host and executive producer. This is a series about evangelism and discipleship. We're highlighting ministries all around the world that are serious about just that. And today we're on Roan Mountain, Tennessee, visiting Fair Haven Ministries. With me is Ed Gore, who's the president and the executive director. Ed, thank you so much for letting us spend some time with you the last couple days hearing about Fair Haven Ministries and what God's doing here. Well, you're welcome, Chuck, and thank you for being here. We're excited that you're here, and uh, we are certainly enjoying our time with you. Yeah, well, what we've learned is uh, it's more than just a retreat center, you know. Uh, tell us a little bit about the foundation of the ministry, the history, the purpose of Fair Haven Ministries. The founder, Dr. Charles Shepson, uh, put this ministry together more than 30 years ago when the Lord laid upon his heart the need for such a place as this. He was watching young people uh, get out of Bible school and Christian university and uh, getting out into ministry world and uh, finding out that they were getting burned out and wounded. And uh, he purposed in his heart that if the Lord would allow him, he would establish a retreat kind of ministry where those people could come and be refreshed and renewed in their spirit. Yeah, even us, uh, right before we got here, heard it in the sermon, Luke 5, 16, where Jesus actually withdrew into the wilderness to pray. So I believe you have a different verse that is the founding verse and the, the, the precept of the ministry that's going on here. We do, Mark 6.31, where after a very intense time of ministry, Jesus said to his disciples, come away with me by yourselves to a quiet place and rest. Mm -hmm. And that is the essence of Fairhaven Ministries. Yeah, people in ministry, there's never a lack of people to minister to and things to do. So uh, talk about that and, and you know some of the folks and maybe the types of ministers, missionaries, pastors, people that come and for that time are refreshing. Well, this past year, we have served over 2,400 people, and they represent a variety of ministries uh, and laypersons. Uh, we are not just for pastors and missionaries, but uh, lay people as well. We realize they have the same issues of burnout and being wounded and, and needing a retreat. And so whether it's uh, coming off the field of another country and uh, reestablishing themselves stateside, uh, or whether it's a local church ministry or a parachurch ministry. Uh, we welcome uh, people from all walks of life and uh, profession and career to come here and find that place of rest and renewal. Yeah, very good. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews and talk about how the Lord is using Fairhaven Ministries to help restore, refresh, and renew the Christian worker. Keep watching. Fairhaven Ministries is to refresh our relationship with Christ, to renew our spirits so our minds are opened. It is primarily to help people who are in difficulty emotionally, spiritually, in their marriage, whatever, and they are in ministry and because of that hurting Christian workers could come where they could be received lovingly and warmly and be helped through their difficulty and back into a place of full ministry again. The setting is um, the beautiful Appalachian Mountains of Eastern Tennessee. It's a, a remote area. It's a safe place. It's a place where people can come and seek God's direction. Uh, as, a, as a counselor, I, the three top reasons people come here is one, marital issues, number two, to seek God's leading for future direction, and number three, for burnout, to have their souls restored. There are times in ministry where just the sheer weight of ministry can become crushing for a leader. Uh, you feel like you're on call, you feel like you are bearing the burden and the weight of other people's 
uh, burdens and hurts and pain in their lives. And then you have your own. You have your own financial struggles, you have your own relationship struggles, troubles with your kids, that, and sometimes you just don't know where to go next. What I've grown up with, with parents in the ministry and, and seeing other people in the ministry, it's hard work. And it's not, um, there's not a lot of rest time and not a lot of time to pull away from real life, kind of. And, um, Pastors and their wives and their families tend to think we can do it all. We don't need anything, we don't need any help, you know, we're pastors. The reality is we are no different from any other human being who goes through trials and tribulations, and they hurt. And when I came, I stayed for two weeks, and I really felt the Lord beginning to heal me. Um, I found out that it's not selfish to take care of yourself before all the sheep in the church. <laughs> I, uh, the counselor on staff helped me greatly just to process what I was feeling, process what we had been through. We get to um, see God uh, touch lives while they're here. He heals His people. When I look back on 20 years in the ministry and pastoring, Fairhaven was a place that I could come and find direction for our church. Uh, some come for family reunions or staff retreats, vacations. I think last year of how we had a family retreat here with three different generations of missionaries. Missionaries scattered all over the world. They came here for one week when they could be together and they were going to be together for another four years. So Fairhaven allowed them to be here together one last time. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations, visiting Fairhaven Ministries in Roan Mountain, Tennessee. And with me is Ed Gore, the President and the Executive Director. You know, we talk a lot about evangelism and sharing the gospel, and uh, there's good, better, best ways to do that. But uh, nothing like having a fresh zeal or a fresh vision from the Lord to go out and fulfill the various types of ministries that we've all been assigned. So talk about Fairhaven, the types of groups that come, that gather, uh, to be refreshed and renewed to go out and share the gospel? Well, I think it starts with a group of one, actually. Uh, this is a great opportunity for an individual to have a personal retreat, just their own time away to unplug from the demands of the world and to come up here and be alone with Jesus. Uh, it goes then from couples to families. Uh, we've been blessed to have family reunions here uh, where some missionary families have been away for four years or longer and they have found Fairhaven to be the perfect place for uh, all the family to come together for a reunion. Uh, we have church leadership teams that come here to wait on the Lord, to pray, to plan and to prepare uh, the next year of ministry. Uh, maybe they're going through some transition themselves within their church and they come here to seek the Lord and to hammer out some of those things that uh, it's kind of the business side of the ministry. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a joy too to have uh, college groups come, high school groups come mm -hmm. for a specific retreat of just uh, learning to go deeper in the relationship with the Lord. We have Christian businessmen who come as a group of men to seek the Lord and to, to find out uh, what they can do to grow deeper in their relationship to Him right. and go back and be a stronger leader in their family, a stronger right. leader in their church and in their community. There's not a lot of signals here, there's not a lot of Wi-Fi or even cell phone coverage, so it's almost like a technology fast to refresh and, and draw in vertically and horizontally. It, with, it, with people. It really is. And, and one of the desires we have is that when people leave this mountain, that they will go back into their community, into their workplace, into their family, into their church, and that oh, those who look at them will know that they have spent time with Jesus. Amen. That's relational evangelism. Exactly. And that's how Jesus did it. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some staff and some guests. Uh, who have been here to talk about how the Lord really uses this mountain to uh, pull His people 
aside for a season to speak into their lives and refresh and renew them. Fairhaven Ministries has 15 cottages. These cottages are spread out along, around the mountains in such a way that there's an incredible amount of privacy. There's a beautiful creek that runs through our, our property with that uh, wonderful gurgling sound that the, that the running water makes that is so peaceful. At all times of the year, there's a special beauty to the mountains that surround this, this property. Uh, to experience God of creation who wants a close and personal relationship with each one of us and through the settings here and through the atmosphere and through the venues of hiking and sitting on some of these decks overlooking mountain ranges uh, the flow of the Holy Spirit's Word speaking to our hearts uh, is what Fairhaven's about is creating uh, the atmosphere preparing the soil uh, for God to grow things in our lives and to bear fruit uh, for eternity all of us need places of rest, uh, safe places. If Jesus would take his disciples aside, I believe Fair Haven is a place where people can come apart to keep from coming apart. Learning how important it is to set aside time to read my Bible and to not just pray, but to listen for how God is leading and to be open to where he would be leading me and the importance of shutting out the world every now and then and I'm placing my focus on him. I'm an artist and a photographer and this place, just the sky, the view of the mountains, the, the walk on the trails, the waterfalls, all of it is just so healing for me. It's, it's, there's no peace or quiet like Fairhaven. We create that atmosphere of peace because happy cows make better cheese. And I just think that happy, contented staff create a happy environment. And, and I think the guests can see that. My husband and I were looking for a getaway. He, we had been in the ministry for the last 28 years. And we spent a couple of nights here and fell in love with it. I have seen people come in very weary and drained, ready to give up the ministry. And in a short period of time, God changes their perspective and their lives and they're ready to go out again. When someone is fully restored to ministry, completely cleansed and rejuvenated, they can go back and utilize the gifts God has given them in full measure. Or for happy places and, and honeymooners and family reunions. Uh, it's just been really special to see God bringing His people here. So every time a reservation is made, we get to say, thank you, Lord, for bringing your people here. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations. We're excited to be here on Roan Mountain in Tennessee visiting Fairhaven Ministries. We've been refreshed and renewed with Ed Gore and the staff and talking about discipleship and what that really means, growing deeper in obedience with the Lord. So discipleship from Fairhaven's uh, perspective, how does that really happen on a day-to-day -day basis here with your staff and your guests? The environment we provide uh, for guests and groups that come here we trust is an environment rich with opportunity for them to meet with the Lord, to them to 
share with one another uh, and grow in their relationship with God. Talk a little bit about the counseling. You know, we've heard it said in some of the interviews, uh, they don't, may not need a verse because they know the Bible, they're teaching the Bible, they're living the Bible, but they need some counseling, someone to talk to, um, and the safe place that they can uh, really be transparent and open up and share some of their struggles and things of that nature. Well, our counseling program really centers on biblically-based counseling. And it is an opportunity for people to come away and talk to somebody, uh, basically a total stranger, where they can lay out their heart, their frustrations, their hurts, their wounds, and uh, do it in a safe and confidential environment. And I think that's very important for the people who are in transition, looking for direction, or just needing some encouragement. Yeah, especially for that you know, pastor, full-time youth worker, uh, missionaries, um, if they're struggling with something, there's really not a lot of places for them to go to in their, in the, within their congregation. That's right. Who, who, do they, who do they talk to? Yeah. And so, uh, again, we take that aspect of our ministry very seriously. It, it's not a huge component of our ministry, but it is one of the most important components of our ministry. Yeah, amen. Ministering to the shepherds. That's right. Until the chief shepherd appears. Amen. Amen. Keep watching, we're gonna talk a little bit more about discipleship and how we're growing in the body and how there's a place set aside to do just that. Uh, we're one of the camps, a few campuses that offers counseling as well as a getaway. One of our phrases is we want you to come and unplug. There are no TVs, no telephones in our chalets. Uh, you're lucky if you get a signal for your cell phone. This is a place where people can isolate, be safe, and have time with God. When pastors have a unique role or relationship, they need to have a place where they can come to a safe place, remain anonymous, but nevertheless have that special retreat a special time of getting away, getting alone with the Lord, and having a time to meet with Him. And if there's needed counseling, they know the Bible, but they need to have somebody that they can bounce things off of, and Fairhaven provides that for them. The Lord Jesus could forgive anything, He could restore anyone, and our goal was total restoration. When we can restore someone with wonderful gifts God has given so that they are free to use those gifts again, it is a real blessing in the kingdom. For most leaders, Christian leaders, pastors in particular, they have a servant heart. They want to serve other people. But I often think of what they tell us in an airline. In the case of an emergency, if that uh, mask comes down, that oxygen mask, uh, they tell us put it on ourselves first because there's a point where you're not going to be able to help anyone else if you don't put the mask on yourself first. Some things were not going the way I planned for them to go. And I heard about this place where I could come and be quiet and focus on God and focus on my heart. And I practically ran up here. <laughs> what gives me joy in serving here is knowing it's for eternity. It isn't just a passing uh, fix it, but it is uh, God working in the lives of His people. And I remember that evening talking to my parents about not knowing whether or not uh, I, would, I was truly saved. And that night actually in the kitchen here, um, they prayed with me and I, um, I gave my life to Christ and I got, got a lot of my doubts settled. And I think Fairhaven played an important part in that. It's just a wonderful place to be and for them to include you as part of the scene of Fairhaven. You don't feel in the way, and they definitely aren't micromanaging it to the point that you felt like you didn't have a good getaway. For me personally, Fairhaven is like that camp that you could hardly wait to get to when you were a kid, that you would actually count the days. Well, Fairhaven is my adult camp. It's the place I love to go the most. 
we are thankful for how many come just seeking the Lord and growing in Him even during the study of His Word. Glad to be able to share burdens, prayer requests, joys that the Lord gives us. Such a good Christian environment to be here working. I'm very thankful for that. Thanks again for watching this episode of Revelations. By now, we're hoping you've had a few. God is still working, and there is a part for you to be playing within the body of Christ. Fairhaven Ministries in Roan Mountain, Tennessee, there's gotta be an opportunity for the body to serve and even utilize this grounds uh, in their ministry. So talk about ways that uh, ministries and churches can get involved in what God's doing here at Fair Fairhaven. Well, one of the ways that churches and, and God's people can get involved is by showing up. Coming here and, and understanding that by being here, uh, they are encouraging us because this is our purpose, to, to see them draw close to the Lord and find that rest and renewal uh, that they need. And yeah. so I think whether they come or they send somebody, uh, send their pastor, send somebody they know. It might even be a family member who needs some time away to sort out life, to sort out their relationship with the Lord. That is certainly a, an active response that they can have. Well, we have opportunities for people to come and volunteer, whether it's for our, our cleaning weeks that we do twice a year, where we just go head to toe through the facilities and just uh, try to keep them in great shape. That's one of the ways we care for the people, that they come and have a really clean and well-kept place in which to stay. Right. Uh, and so those are two ways, but ultimately we want people to be praying. We are in a battle. It is yeah. not our battles. The Lord is, is, is in the war with us and for us, yeah. uh, but, but His people feel the effects of the enemy and so to uh, uphold this ministry in prayer is, is vital. Yeah. Uh, half of our financial support comes from those who uh, see it in their heart to make some type of financial contribution. To yeah, the scholarships as well for those that may not be able to afford this day but really need it. So, That's right. um, you know, they're really investing in uh, the future impact of a Christian worker to go out from here and, and make a real difference in the world. The Apostle Paul's and Timothy's and, and such. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, keep watching. We're going to talk about ways that uh, people like you in the body of Christ can take advantage of what God has prepared for His people to be a part of again, strengthening Christian workers to go out there and be world changers and disciple makers. The restoration of people, I, I believe, is huge. Here are people who have spent a good portion of their lives studying, preparing, uh, others have invested in their lives. They have uh, people who depend on them for ministry. And uh, all of us at one time or another go through periods of time where we need some restoration and, and renewal. We need to reconnect with God. We need to refresh our vision. We want to be used of God to be His hospital for wounded workers. And Dr. Shepson's book taught me that it's the daily walk and the devotional time with God each day is where you discern His will for your life. And reading that book in one of the chalets here was uh, an eye-opener for me. And in our society, we're so busy, we're so overwhelmed, we're constantly having our to-do lists. If you could send people here, um, if you come here yourself and find out, you'll be amazed at how God can give you the rest you need. Or you can go down to the lodge and have coffee with the staff. You can go into town and have a nice meal. You can go back and seek the sanctuary of the woods, the, the Roaring Creek and um, the Chirping Birds. It's a perfect environment for whatever an individual personality seeks in restoring relationship with God. The best thing people can do is pray. 
Um, the enemy does not want Fairhaven to exist because God is refreshing his workers here. When I was desperate, when no one else was hearing me, and my desperate cry for help, Fairhaven said, come. And isn't that exactly what Jesus said? Well, again, I want to thank our viewers for watching this episode of Revelations. And Ed, thank you for letting us spend a couple days here with you and your team. You guys are awesome. And uh, I think we found our retreat center. Whenever we need to get away, we'll be back. That's for sure. Well, we're counting on that, Chuck. <laughs> we want to see you and Annette again sometime. And we appreciate Revelations TV uh, finding us and uh, coming here to uh, proclaim what God is doing here on this mountain. We have a wonderful staff. Uh, and uh, they can't wait to serve you. Yeah, we sometimes hear things like, well, we're God's best kept secret and <laughs> we don't want to keep this place a secret anymore, right? That is for sure. Thank yeah. you. Well, let's pray together with our viewers watching and uh, ask the Lord to move in our hearts and show us how we might co-labor together to make sure that healthy sheep are beginning healthy sheep. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, you are awesome. We thank you again for the power of that Holy Spirit that works in us and through us for your glory, for your purposes. And we just lift up this place, this hundred acres we know is holy land set apart for kingdom work. And uh, Lord, you know our needs. You know when we're tired and when we're weary. And you say, come to me, uh, those who are weary and heavy laden, and you will give us rest. So I thank you for this place. And we pray with our viewers watching that, Lord, if there is anyone who needs that time apart, that they would consider Fairhaven Ministries and uh, an opportunity to draw closer to you and draw closer to one another, to be refreshed, renewed, and uh, again, to be uh, enlightened with that vision from heaven above to go out and to the world, locally, regionally, and globally, to evangelize and make disciples before your glorious return. So I would ask you to bless Fairhaven Ministries, its board of directors, Dr. Shepson and his wife for their vision and all the moving parts, the staff, the volunteers, that they would be continuing to minister in your name uh, to those that come here. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks again for watching. And until our next episode, I want to encourage you to take a look at their website as well. It's fairhavenministries.net. And again, until our next episode, may you and your families be blessed.